Hey, hey, gang, how's it going? Uh, my name is Kara DiNardo, and I have been with Family First since November of last year, so just under a month, and I've been in the business for about four years. Um, and I want to thank you for trusting me to do this training. Hope you find value. This is a SkyPoint phone script training. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw those in the chat. We'll address those here shortly. But what we're going to be talking about there's a lot of trainings on the actual phone script itself, but what I want to actually review is almost pre-gaming. So similar to a football game or something similar to that, um, what we're looking to do is how can we actually set up your processes and um, have you set up for success? So um, first thing is, is most of you, if you've been dialing for a little bit, great. If you haven't dialed at all, that's okay. What we're going to be looking at is how do we make sure that you are set up to know exactly what you're going to be doing before you even hit the phones. Um, and so with that, um, we want to let you guys know you are not telemarketers. And that was a big misconception for me when I first started. I'm like, should I feel like a telemarketer? But we are not telemarketers. There's intentionality behind how we have gotten the information to reach out to a client. They've had to either call us, they've had to fill out a form, but they have initiated the request for us to call them. Um, so a couple of things when it comes to setting up the right environment for dialing, make sure that you have a good headset. Um, one of the things that I know as far as our house, we have a lot of stuff wireless. We've got 15 year old triplets, they have laptops, cell phones, we have our own cell phones and our own laptops. We have smart TVs, Alexa. And so the list kind of goes on and on. And anytime you have those wireless gadgets, they can interfere with any wireless headset that you might have when you're doing your dials. So what I'm going to recommend is either go old school with your cell phone, get a hard wire connection for your headset so that there isn't that feedback. Or if you're using your computer to do dials, if you're um, doing, um, if you're using phone burner or if you're using Ninja Dial or Ringy or any one of those, make sure that you have a USB um, headset that plugs directly into your laptop. So that way you're not getting all those wireless feedbacks. Um, and then what uh, you, because you want to make sure that you're clear and easy to hear. Um, and what you want to do is make sure that you are testing your phone often. Uh, I typically will test my phone once a week to make sure that the quality sounds good and also that my phone number doesn't come over as spam. So when you're testing your phone, call somebody, somebody who doesn't have your phone number or at least doesn't have it plugged in and registered and have their number saved. But so that way you at least can make sure that your number isn't coming up as a spam number. And and know as far as my phone, my sometimes my my internet gets a little spotty, so the quality of my conversation can oftentimes have just a little bit of a, a, a tingy to it. So we want to make sure that it's clear so that a person on the other side doesn't sound like, oh, there's somebody calling from across the country or over on the other side of the world. We want to sound as local as possible. Um, if you're using a dialing program, um, and I mentioned a few of them. The ones that are most popular are Phone Burner, Ninja Dialer, Ringy. There are certainly some other ones. But you want to make sure that your phone number doesn't come up as spam. And if you have different phone numbers, if you have different um, phones that you're using, you want to make sure that you've gone in and tested those numbers because the likelihood that somebody's going to answer your phone if it comes up is unknown and certainly a spam, you're going to have a very hard time getting people to answer. Even if you have a phone number that comes up with the actual phone number across the line, they may or may not answer. So what I'm going to suggest for you is scrub your number and how you can do that is you can go to a website called calltransparency.com. 
It's going to have you register your number, register any possible number that you're planning on using. So if you've got a kid's number that you're going to use, if you're going to use a spouse's phone number to use for a different phone number to show up, whatever numbers those are, scrub them all, put them in and make sure that they go through. Another little trick that um, I like doing, I used to be in the hotel business. And so what I used to do is back in the hotel world, we use TripAdvisor. So I would go in and I would punch in my phone number in Google search. And if my number came up in spam, I'm going to go to that specific website and put in a positive post. Um, so I go to spam sites and I'll do something similar to, hey, um, this is Jennifer Johnson. I'm glad I answered my phone. It was a live person and it was a request that I had put for my mortgage. So if you put enough of those um, kind of uh, promoted um, posts into those particular sites, it's going to reduce the possibility that your phone number comes up as spam. Um, using call transparency, they're going to go ahead and clear it through some of the major phone carriers. So the most common ones are going to be Verizon, T-Mobile Sprint, they've merged forces, and AT&T. So they're going to make sure that as best as they can, that those numbers are going to come up as a positive phone number and not a rejected phone number or spam. And you want to probably do that at least once a month and just make sure those numbers don't go back into that kind of platform. And um, if again, if you have any questions on how to get there, let us know. That's what we're here to do is to help you find those um, different kinds of formats. But your call transparency is actually going to be the best way to make sure that your phone number is going to be answered because the likelihood that you're going to write business on somebody without actually talking to them is pretty small, except now that we have ethos. <laughs> um, and then some other things from a setup standpoint that's worked really well for me. And um, for me, I'm typically about somewhere between a twenty to forty thousand dollar a month producer, and so I've gone to doing a hybrid of different kinds of um, calendar scheduling. So I do use a Google Calendar, but I also use a paper calendar. And some people might go, "Well, gosh, that's really, really old school." And I would say yes, but one of the things that I do is I work multiple um, areas, multiple time zones. And the last thing I want to do is put in a time and realize that I've missed a, an appointment because I didn't have the right time scheduled on there. So I'm going to actually share my screen. I'm going to show you how I build my schedule. And I'll show you that here in a few minutes. But um, we're going to go through what is the process that I use. And it works for quite a few people, it may not work for you, but just giving you a foundation to start building what are some things that are going to work for you. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to talk about before then is when you're on the phone, the nice thing is they can't see you. So when you're calling somebody, um, you might have a fidget spinner in your hand. You may have, I don't know what else you might have in your hand, but they can't see you. And I like to say is you can have as many performance aids as necessary. So I have my script on one screen. I have objections on a piece of paper in front of me. I have post-its. I have all sorts of stuff so that when somebody says something, I have something easily for me to reference back to especially when you're new because you get really nervous when you're first calling. I still get nervous, guys. I've been doing this for four years. So just know that it doesn't necessarily get easier. It just gets different. You get all sorts of different things as you go through this career. So let me go ahead. I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to show you what I do and how I build my schedule. So if I'm looking at, I'm going to show you Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I'll show you Monday to Thursday. So I've got my blank calendar here. And so that's what I'm starting with. The next thing I'm going to add in is I'm going to add my results. And so what my results look like is I'm going to tally up my dials, my contacts, the number of appointments that I've set, 
if I've done any one call closes, the number of sits I've had for the day, the number of applications I've written for the day, the amount of the total AP, and then how many ethos links have I sent out based on who I haven't been able to reach. So I have that every single day of the week. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my what I call non-negotiables. Either somebody else can't do it, it's going to be self-care, or something that um, is extremely important important that I can't miss. So for me, for example, I have on Sunday, I volunteer at church. I also volunteer Saturday night. And then we had a party to go to that evening on Saturday. So those I put in 10 because those are non-negotiables. Unless fire, flood, or blood, I'm not going to move those. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to book any appointments and I'm going to put them in pencil. And that allows me to make sure that if they needed to move it, if I put it into the wrong time zone, I've got a chance to be able to correct it. And so what I do is I'll put the name of the client, what state they're in, and then on the second line, a little bit of fast information to reference to. So for example, I've got Amber and Chris, they're out of Ohio. I'm going to be doing a BYOB, Be Your Own Bank presentation. It's going to be over Zoom, Zoom. And what time is it for them? It's 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. I'm Pacific. I've got Michelle. She's out of North Carolina. I'm doing a mortgage protection program over Zoom. And her time is going to be 4.15. So on the weekends, it's certainly for me a little bit lighter, uh, but I do still work on the weekends. Now, here's my results. So on the right hand side, I've taken my totals from the AP and what applications I've written, and I'm going to go ahead and post them day by day. So for example, I've got on September 15th, I had one application for 708 with ethos, and that's the true stage. I did 744 with ethos term. It was an ethos day. I did 2256 with ethos, uh, true stage, and then 1296 with Americo payment protector. So I did a total of four applications for 5004. And then the next day on the 16th, I had five applications for eight, um, 8251. I didn't write anything on the 17th which would have been Saturday and Sunday, I didn't write anything either. So that's how I can quickly track what my business is. So I just put that in the margin. Now, if you remember, my first scheduled appointment was Amber and Chris, but I had a couple of people call me back. So I put those applications and those appointments in here and so I have Charlotte Johns out of Washington. She called me back. We did one application with Mutual of Omaha. Patrick out of Nevada, he called me back. We did an Americo. So those two were added in. Then I did one presentation. I sent forms for the BYOB. And then for Michelle, I wrote three applications. And then Jonathan was a no-show. Um, and so that's kind of how that all comes together. Now for looking at a traditional Monday through Thursday, so the first part of the week, again, I've got my blank schedule. I've got my tally marks that I'm looking to go ahead and build in. And then I put in my non-negotiables. So non-negotiables and I, I do really well with colors. So I put in my business, meetings non-negotiable in purple and then I put my personal non-negotiables in green so I have um, our team is doing a 20,000 K running club I have on Tuesday we have our team avalanche at 12 noon on Wednesday I have our team meeting Wednesday later I have a church lunch and then Thursday I have the coast to coast team meetings and then at five o'clock, we have our hiring event. So these are all my non-negotiables and I put those in pen. 
then as I'm starting to build my calendar, now I've got all of my appointments filling in. And again, all in pencil. And I try and put in as much information in the little space that's possible. For me, when I do, I do a hybrid of uh, primarily Zoom appointments and telesales. So telesales, I allocate about 30 minutes and Zoom appointments, I allocate 45. And then finally, here are my results. So you can see that all of a sudden, a very blank calendar about six days before was absolutely blank. And now it's been a pretty darn busy week. And then down below, I will put the results after each meeting. So this particular client on the first day, still shopping, um, we rescheduled. I wrote an application, I wrote two applications, a no-show. Here are my tally marks. So I dialed, they're my contacts, the appointments I actually set. Did I do any one call closes? How many sits? The number of applications and what was the total AP? And then in addition, did I send out any ethos links? And then I do that day by day. So it's really, for me, it's a nice quick hit view of my week. We have Tuesday, we have Wednesday. And so um, this way I can also track. And as I'm working with leadership, I can say, gosh, you know what? My no-show rates have been awful. And they'll say, well, what kind of appointments are you setting? Well, I'm setting primarily Zoom. Have you sent a link to the client for them to go ahead and accept and approve? Maybe that's why. But until I actually have something that I can reference to, it's really hard for us to be able to get any kind of um, information to get better. So that is how I build my schedule. Um, when it comes to your actual schedule, um, what I recommend is creating a, a reward system. And when you're creating your reward system, you want to go ahead and involve your family. Most of us work from home. We have kids. We have spouses. We have girlfriends, boyfriends. We have pets. We have a whole variety pack of distractions. And in order for you to be able to do your job, just like a W-2 style job, they need to be able to allow you to do your job. Now, because they can see you, they may not realize that you're actually working. So what, what works really well is to put some kind of reward system for your entire family, especially if you have little ones. Um, so what you might do is uh, put on the outside of your door just a piece of paper and a tally and say, when I get five appointments, I'm going to take you guys for a walk or read a short book. Um, after I've booked 15 appointments, we're going to hop in the car, we're going to go to McDonald's, get a 99 cent ice cream cone, but something that they have to look forward to as well, so that they can cheer you on, and more importantly, leave you alone. So we have, in our family, we actually have a saying. So when I was in an office, um, I actually, my first office was inside my walk-in closet, uh, because there was two doors before the kids could come and reach me. And we used to say, unless there's fire, flood, or blood, you cannot come and interrupt. So that, um, and it takes time, guys. <laughs> it does take some routine, and it does take some discipline, not just on their side, but on yours as well. Because a lot of times it's super easy to go, oh, let me just fix this once. And you fix it once, and then they just kind of take it and do it again. <laughs> and then they know, you know, kids are easy. I need a cookie. Nope. I need a cookie. Nope. I need a cookie. All right. <laughs> so we want to make sure that you're building the habits so that you can have success while having them also be disciplined to letting you do that. Um, you know, some of the things that I used to use when I was first doing this kind of um, this was a very, very different environment for me when I first started doing this kind of career. I had no idea what I was doing. I had been a fairly decent salesperson in the hotel world, but um, 
So I thought, hey, this is going to be great. <laughs> I can just call people and life is good. And picking up the phone is so different than picking up the phone to call a buddy. So um, what I learned is I needed to put a personal reward system. And when I first started, I would actually go ahead and um, I would have a bag of M&Ms and a bag of Hershey Kisses. And every time I talked to somebody, I would have an M&M. And every time I booked an appointment, I used to have a Hershey Kiss. And then I started getting fat and realized that was not probably a really good environment. So then what I did was I decided that if I actually had just small, tangible rewards, that might be a better approach. So what I look at doing is every time I book an appointment, I have what I refer to as a client qualification form. So it's just general information that I can jot down on a piece of paper. So when I meet with the client that they have, um, that they have knowledge that I know what it is we're gonna be talking about. They don't have to repeat themselves on most of the information. And I actually print those on a blue piece of paper. Um, and it does a couple of different things. It's a nice reward. So when you book an appointment, you go, I get to pull up another blue sheet. Um, so it's just a small, uh, a small little reward there. But when you're looking through all your papers, and when I first started, I had just stacks and stacks between leads and papers, and uh, I'd have um, applications, and I would have all sorts of stuff on my desk, and then I couldn't find the actual information to go ahead and run the appointment. So by putting them on a blue piece of paper, you can find them easily when you have that sea of white. So it works pretty well. Um, and again, it's just a very small, uh, small thing that helps. Um, yeah, gold or yellow, perfect. Because <laughs> we're winners here, we are gold. <laughs> Um, some other things that are helpful when you first start and even now um, we're in football season and I'm going to tell you I'm a Packer fan and so one of the most famous misquoted quotes perfect makes practice and that's Vince Lombardi the actual quote is perfect practice makes perfect so in order for you to be able to hone in your craft um, record yourself and it's uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. And it's even more uncomfortable listening. And it's even harder when you have somebody else listen to it. But that's where you're going to find out what are you really saying versus what do you think you're saying? Um, the best athletes in the world, they watch film hours upon hours daily. And that is why they have honed their craft in because they can see, you know what, if I would have turned my hand just about three inches one other way, I could have had a different result. And those are just the small things that a lot of people don't realize because in this business, when we're dialing, when we're using our phone scripts and when we're doing those pieces of this business, it's not a lot of magic. It's just a few small adjustments that really, really do make a big difference. A um, couple of books. I just kind of put a couple of things on lists to kind of reference back to. But um, for those of you who haven't read a few books, here's a couple of ones that have been really helpful. One of them is Go For No. Super easy read. You can probably get it done in an afternoon. Um, and it's just how to get past the psychology of picking up the darn phone to actually start dialing. Um, one of the things in this business that's really, really easy to do is getting ready. I've got all my stuff. I've done all my reading. I've done all my notes. I've, I've looked at all the carriers. I know all the applications inside and out. But you forget you actually have to pick up the phone and call someone. <laughs> so um, go for no is really helpful uh, to get you to where you need to go. Because this business, we would love to say everybody wants to talk to us. And the fact of the matter is they should because they filled out a request to get information. So that's typically how you get the information is talking to someone. But um, you are gonna find that this is a business and it's a little bit harder than what most people initially think. So yes, you're gonna get some no's. You're gonna get some, um, you're gonna get some more no's. You're gonna get a lot of no's, but you're gonna find out that 
those yeses, actually just those one or two yeses and those big fat noes will make a huge financial impact for you. Um, another book that I like is Why She Buys. And um, what it, it's actually based, the, you really only, really only need to read maybe the first two or three chapters, but it's the psychology of going into a car dealership. And while the husband may be the final decision maker, the wife will influence. So if she does not like it, she does not like you as the salesperson, they ain't buying. So to understand a little bit of those pieces are also really helpful. Um, all right, so most of you probably have already heard this if you've done some of these different trainings before, but we're just gonna do some quick hits on some uh, key points that I think should be helpful. So when we dial, we ideally want a triple dial. And triple dialing means that you're gonna call the same phone number three times in succession fairly quickly. And what I like to do is I'm gonna dial once and I'm gonna wait till it goes to voicemail. I wanna know if their outgoing voicemail is a phone number, if it's a name, if it's the right name, or if it's a different name. They may say, hey, this is John, leave a message. And my lead says, hey, this is Mark. So maybe his name is Mark John and he goes by John. Maybe it says formally this guy's name is Christopher and he goes by Chris. We want to come across as friendly as possible without sounding too business. Uh, we don't want to sound too formal. We're just meeting a new friend because the more you sound business, the more likely that they're going to hang up on you. So we want to find out what is the outgoing name. So when they do answer, you can say, hey, John, this is Kara. I was giving you a quick call back. Um, so that's the first dial. The second dial, we're going to let it ring. We're going to let it ring maybe four or five times. And then the third time, we're going to go ahead and let it ring maybe four or five times and hang up. That is triple dialing. And there's a psychology behind that. The first one, a lot of people don't answer their first call. They think it's a telemarketer, might be a mistake. The second time you call, they're going to think, again, it's probably a mistake. The third time when you call, it's intentional. And a lot of people will either answer because they're concerned or they're curious. And I have booked a lot of business on that third attempt. Um, and so that's what the first series of dials looks like. Now for me, I'm gonna dial these leads until I've gotten resolution, until they've told me no at least twice, or I'm gonna continue to put them into my, my queue so that I'll eventually get back to them. Um, so the first time I don't leave a voicemail. The second series, I'm going to go ahead and dial. I'm going to let it ring maybe four times or so. The second time I dial, I'm actually, I am going to leave a voicemail. And I'm just going to keep it very general. I'm going to say, hey, John, this is Kara getting back to you about a request you had filled out. And it's pretty, pretty generic. But what I do is I wait for about 20 or 30 seconds. So that way, the voicemail will hit their phone saying you have a new voicemail. And then I'm gonna call again because now they've seen that there's a call, there's a voicemail and they pick up on that third ring. If you're getting to the second series and you still haven't gotten resolution or spoken with them, the third time I'm gonna dial these leads, this is how I do it. So again, dial that first dial, second dial, third dial. And now I'm gonna leave a text. I'm going to text them. I'm going to say, hey, especially if you have a handwritten form, you can take a snapshot of that, send it on over, and I'll send a picture of my insurance license for that state along with a picture of me and my contact telephone number. And I'm going to say, hey, John, been trying to reach you here regarding this request you had filled out. Give me a shot when you have a moment so we can get this completed for you. The fourth time, 
I've now struck out one, two, three. I'm going to go again, that fourth series. I'm going to do the same thing, dial three times, let it ring. I'm not going to leave a voicemail, but now I'm going to send an ethos link. So those are kind of the way that I handle my leads um, to get as much resolution as possible. Um, so that's the actual dialing process. Um, how to track your dials. Um, this would be the next piece because the best way for us to help as mentors is to be able to have some information that we can work off of. So what I'm going to suggest for you is print out your leads. In the top right-hand corner, put the date you purchased the lead, the type of lead. So if it's instant internet, new internet, mortgage protection, two month, whatever those leads are in the corner. And then um, every time that you're dialing, you're going to go ahead and just put a little note underneath it. So the date and time of each dial session with tally marks. So I called them once, one tally mark. I called them twice. They didn't answer, got voicemail, um, put another tally. So at the end, you're going to have three tallies if they have not answered. So I might put 9, 10 at 10 a.m. And I've got three tallies. So now I'm going to call them again. I know that when I call them at 10 a.m., they didn't answer, maybe they're working. So now I'm going to choose a different time to give them a call. So now it might say 9, 10 at 4.47 p.m., two tallies, and the answer on the third ring. So that's how you can keep track of your leads, see what kind of resolution you're getting on each of those. And then when they answer, here's the next tip that's going to be helpful is at the top of the lead, if they hang up before the appointment is set, write down when they hung up, when they hung up. Was it when you gave them your name? Was it during the appointment setting, during the tie down? Um, was it, hey, I was calling you about and they hang up? Or, hey, I was calling you about your mortgage for 147,000 originally with Bank of America and then they hang up. Where did they actually hang up so that you can see some patterns. Um, because there is ways from a phone script and how you articulate in your cadence on the phone that can be adjusted just to get those people to answer and listen through the whole portion of your presentation so that they can go ahead and schedule that appointment with you. It also gives us an opportunity as, as mentors to be able to see when are the patterns of when they hung up. So was it before they ever answered? Was it, um, hey, I was calling you about? Was it after you gave the mortgage information? Was it, hey, I was just trying to see what medications you're currently taking? Whatever that is, let's see where the patterns are so we can make those small adjustments for you. Um, when it comes to dialing, I I like to do a couple of different dial sessions and I'll do a dial session typically about two hours, but really my goal is to sh make sure that I either schedule five appointments during that dial session or dial a hundred dials. And again, a dial is anytime you pick up your phone and you hit the green send button. So that way um, we can track. So if you've called them three times, that's three dials, not one dial. Um, even though it's one client. So 100 dials or five appointments, whichever comes first. And oftentimes you're gonna see that as you're getting closer to that 100th dial or closer to that fourth or fifth appointment, you're building that momentum and you start to build and you're like, it's been two, it's been 20 minutes since I booked an appointment. It's been 10 minutes. Oh, Everybody wants a, an appointment now. And all of a sudden, as you're getting to the very end of those specific dial sessions, the urgency in your voice changes and people seem to be excited or ready to book an appointment. And it's all part of the psychology people. <laughs> it's all it is. And so with that, um, put a specific time that you are dialing so that at the end you can have some some breaks because you cannot be dialing for eight straight hours 
unless you are just having a bang up dial session and you've booked 27, 30 appointments. Um, but most people, if you've dialed 100 dials, you probably are gonna secure somewhere between three to five appointments. Even if you're brand new, it's volume, volume, volume. Um, and so if you're looking to book 15 appointments and if you're following the traditional family first uh, schedule, you're gonna dial Monday and Thursday, 15 appointments each. So with that, you may do a two or three hour dial session in the morning, a two or three hour dial session in the afternoon, and again in the evening. And so that's how you can get five appointments, five appointments, five appointments, now you have 15. And really, regardless of how old or how new you are in this business, it's volume of appointments is what's going to end up getting you the kind of business that you want, as well as the kind of income that you want. And believe it or not, the more appointments you set, the more money you make. Weird. <laughs> um, so that is kind of some of the different tips in that that I just wanted to share. Um, we can go through some actual phone script training, but I think there's a lot of phone, phone script training um, that's currently available. But is there anybody who has any questions, anybody um, that wants some clarification? Or if you do want to go through some phone scripts, let's go through them. I'm going to go through the chat. Let's see what we got here. Yes, calltransparency.com. Thank you, Kyle. Um, <laughs> Peggy, you can go to um, Amazon. I get the one that's called Blue Sky and it's called appointment, um, an appointment book. So it's just like as if somebody was going to have a, a beautician or a salon, they have those appointment books. My appointment calendar is broken up every 15 minutes. Uh, let me go ahead and I'll show you again. And so, um, here we go, we've got, uh, for example, on Wednesday, I've got Ray at uh, six o'clock, I've got Jim at, oh, just getting five o'clock, and I've got Jim at 5.30, I have Francis at six, I have Mary at 6.45. So you can see the best way to build your schedule is just volume, 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 volume. And so there's just the last half of my afternoons with um, these four days. But you can see that it gives you enough room to be able to put the information in. And then in addition, um, because it's split every 15 minutes, you've got enough space to be able to book multiple appointments. Some of the other calendars that I've used in the past were broken down by the hour. And if you're trying to book two or three appointments, based on what type of appointment you're booking, you may not have enough room. Um, I will do this in conjunction with a digital calendar. And so for me, one of the things when you're in Arizona, Arizona doesn't change their clocks during daylight savings. So my paper calendar really helps me, especially during those transition times because it, it'll automatically flip and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm either early or late. and um, we also do a lot of traveling because we can work from anywhere. And so if I cross over time zones and I don't have my paper calendar, it's going to say the appointment is at this time. And I realize that it's adjusted my calendar based on the new time zone. So I could potentially miss that appointment. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Um... So Al, let me go ahead and go through my sequence of dial processes for you. So triple dialing, the first time, the first series that I dial, I'm gonna call dial one, wait for voicemail, see what the outgoing voicemail says. Dial two, four or five minutes, uh, four or five dials, um, or four or five rings, dial three, four or five rings, no voicemail on the first series. The second series, a different time of day. And the first time, 
let it ring four or five times. The second time, I am going to leave a voicemail very general. And then I'm going to wait for about 30 seconds so it can hit their voicemail alert. And then I'm going to call them again. The third time I dial, I am going to dial one, two, three, four. I'm going to let it ring four times, second dial, four times, third dial, four times, leave a general text message with my credentials and the lead, especially if it's a handwritten one. And then the fourth series, I'm going to dial, let it ring four times, one, two, three. And then if they don't answer then, and I'm going to send them an ethos link. Okay, who else? Thanks for asking. Any other questions? All right, gang. If you have any other questions, I'll stay on for just another minute or two. But anybody else who wants to hop off, feel free. Good job, lady. <laughs>